Good morning, everyone. It feels so different being up so high. I feel like I'm a whole whole level a whole level up now. <laughs> How's everyone doing this morning? Is everyone doing good? It's good to be here, isn't it? I'm just super grateful to be back here. <laughs> We could be any, many other places and we could all be locked inside our homes, but praise the Lord we get to be here today. I just want to start with a, just a word that the Lord, the Lord's spoken for us uh, that he wants us to hear this morning. He says, let my presence fill this sanctuary as you come with praise and honor, as you come with arms lifted high. Let my words sing out throughout the land. Let your praise fill this temple. Pray for your country. Pray for this world that I will come and heal your land. And once again, my blessings will be on it. God wants us to pray for our country, amen? Sometimes we live by feelings. We're tempted to live by feelings on occasion. And we think that you know this or that thing is God's will to happen. But it says that in the Bible that we are the yes and amen of God and that we bring the will of God to the, to the earth. So that's, that means it's our, it's our birthright, it's our place, it's our calling from God to bring his blessing and his, his love to the earth. It it's calls on us to pray for the world. When people aren't seeing eye to eye with God, it calls for us to pray for them and to bless them. So let's just keep that in mind. We're just going to praise and worship God this morning. Will you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for this time in your presence. Thank you for the blessing that you're bringing on our country and our land, Father. Thank you for renewing your, your, a, a right spirit and a right mind in each of us this morning and helping us to keep our eyes fixed on what really matters, Lord, on the blessing that you and I and everyone here were created to be, Father. Thank you so much. Keep our minds on the, on the truth, Father, so that we don't get drifted away into feelings and living sensual and not, not praying the way that you want us to pray, not being the light in the earth that you want us to be. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord my God When I'm in awesome wonder Consider all the world's thy hand is made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power through the universe display and sings my soul, my Savior, God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. And sings my soul, my Savior, God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. And when I think that God, His Son, not sparing, sent Him to die, I scarce can take it in. That in the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great. Hey, how's everybody doing this morning? Jesus, like, come on. This is the first time we get to come together and just celebrate and worship God as a, a community. We've been locked away for too long, so I expect a little bit more energy. How's everybody doing this morning? A little bit better. I see everybody's woken up. Hey, I just want to take the time to just uh, do communion with you guys, but I don't know if you guys have just uh, realized how much of a blessing this time has been. Uh, for me, me and my wife have just been able to spend more time together and, uh, and growing the Word of God together. 
Some of you have been wanting to kill each other. I'm glad you haven't. I'm, I'm glad to see everybody's, uh, I've seen one person. Uh, no. Oh, no, I see him. Okay. <laughs> but um, actually, just yesterday, me and my wife celebrated our five-year anniversary. So, so that's just been great. Uh, some of you are probably like five years. That's nothing. Uh, we live in a community now where five years is great. So it's five years we're continuing, and I'm just thanking God for that. I just want you guys to just uh, take the elements, and we're just going to begin thinking about being in your chair in the front. Uh, it's in yours. Yeah. Um, and we're just going to take the time uh, to just really ponder on the things of God and just really think and uh, be grateful for what God has done in our life. So as everybody's getting the elements, I'm going to pray over them. The first service I did is a lot smoother. Jesus, we just thank you, God, um, for this body that was broken, broken for us, God, so that we would not have to be broken. We thank you for this price that you paid so that we would not have to pay it. God, as we just sit here and just meditate on the things um, that you have done for us, as we just meditate on a body that was broken for us, God, may we just be thankful for everything that you have done in our lives. God, we just thank you for the blood that was poured out for us. We thank you, God, that, that we did not have to shed this blood. Um, God, we thank you that you came and that you were the substitute for us. Uh, God, we thank you that this blood washes over all our sins. It doesn't matter what we have done. It doesn't matter what our past is, God. It doesn't matter uh, anything in that in that realm. But your blood washes over all of us, and it makes it it makes our sins uh, go away. It makes the stains uh, completely clean, God. And we just thank you for this blood that was shed for us. We thank you for everything you are doing in our lives. We thank you that you are still sovereign and that you're still seated on the throne. It doesn't matter about the virus. It doesn't matter about the rioting, God, that you're through it all, you're still sovereign. God, in everything we do, whether it be intentional or whether it not be, may it always be to give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When Christ shall come With shouts of acclamation Take me home What joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble adoration Then proclaim My God how great thou art and sings my soul, my Savior, God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. Sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. How great thou art. Word of God says, The Lord your God is among you. He is mighty to save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. The God of heaven, he loves you so much, and I just want you to imagine that he is singing this song to you this morning.
listen, bring your addictions Come lay them down at the foot of the cross Jesus is waiting there with open arms For God so loved the world that He gave us His one and only Son to save us You may have a seat. We're just uh, excited to be here this morning. I'm just going to grab uh, Dave's stand here. He's got the least amount of stuff on his stand, so. <laughs> so I'll just grab this. I'm just super grateful for everybody who's here this morning and uh, just uh, very, very grateful to our church here at New Life for all of your support and uh, just your encouragement and uh, continuing to, uh, you know, fellowship with each other online. I know some of you have uh, had a lot of the online. Uh, for me, sometimes, you know, I don't know, I just, I'm like, ah. <laughs> like some of the Zoom meetings, I'm like, can I just post a picture of me and just walk away? <laughs> Sometimes it's like, and, and, they, and they keep changing them. It's at different times, you know, depending on where the meeting is and what the meeting is and what it's for, uh, things keep changing over time. So it gets a little frustrating. Uh, but I just want to thank all of you who are part of it, part of the service, uh, part of all our prayers online and everything. So thank you very much. Um, this morning, I want to talk about uh, the Pentecost. It's about the Holy Spirit. It's a topic that's little uh, you know, for some people, it's like, oh, he's going to talk about this. The very first week, we are back. <laughs> some feel like, I wish I knew I would come next week. Uh, so it's the, the title of the sermon, Is He Being Erased? So it's a, yeah, I feel like it, we're at a time in our life and in a generation where the Holy Spirit is sort of being erased from, from Christianity and, and the fellowship and church as a whole. Where people are like, hey, you know what, the Holy Spirit is really not trending so much, so let's just keep him in the side. You know, trends and norms in the society change over time. 
You know, there were things that uh, we do now that never happened before. Like, you know, this past week, I was talking to my daughters and I was like, hey, who wants to help dad at the church? And they were like, not me. I was like, ha, huh, wow, you even have opinions now. You know, when I was growing up, I could never say no, not me. Like if my dad was like, who wants to help? Uh, <laughs> I guess it's me. <laughs> there was like, there was no choices given. But, you know, as you're get, the times change, so your kids get to say their opinions and stuff. Like, you know, yesterday we were going to an event and our kids were like, do we have to come to it? Are we invited to it? Like, dude, we are invited. It doesn't matter if you're invited or not. Do, are we going to stay in the car the whole time or are we going to be free? Like, they asked all these questions that I never asked my parents. Like, never, ever. Like, you know, my parents like, we're leaving. Okay, we're on our way. <laughs> you never ask any other questions. You just, you just go. Because why? Because things have changed. How we parent our kids have changed. The questions our kids ask us back has changed. They get to ask more questions. What's for food today? Do I have to eat it? <laughs> things like that. You know, there's many things that have changed. They change as the majority acceptance changes within the culture. That's what happens. So the culture as a whole decides what happens and as a whole the, the changes keep changing and happening. You know, church online was looked down, you know, even a couple months ago. People are like, oh, we'll never worship the Lord online. That is, you know, that is the devil. And then all of a sudden, we were all worshiping online. We're like, oh, the presence of the Lord is powerful. <laughs> we're all fine with it. You know, why? Because it's the acceptance of the majority automatically. You're like, oh, Jesus can move online too. I never knew this. You know, those of you who watched the 700 Club, Jesus was moving on the TV. It's the same exact thing. It's just Jesus moving on your laptop. Okay, so uh, it's just a little different. But it's like sometimes we don't accept it till the majority of the people accept it. And you're like, okay, uh, I think we can do this now. And, and in a similar way, the Holy Spirit over time has been put aside by the church because of the trends. The church was at one point was starting to get afraid of, of the Holy Spirit because they're like, hey, I don't know. People don't want to come to church because if you say something about the Holy Spirit, it's like, it's just like, especially if you use the King James Version, it's just Holy Ghost. It's like, oh. And then people like start freaking out. Like little kids are afraid of the ghosts. You know, is this like Casper the friendly ghost or Ghostbusters type of a ghost? What, what kind of ghost is this? You know, so we start asking all these questions. And so the church was like, hey, now that people are asking if, if the Holy Spirit's like Casper the friendly ghost or a whole different kind of ghost, let's just abandon him. Like just, it's not trending anymore. Let's just leave them in the side. And somewhere we, we, we think that as a church we can function and be effective in our lives without the Holy Spirit. And, and so what happens is over time because of fear and empowerment and, and some feel he's not needed. So it's eventually come to a place where it's like, uh, no, we're not going to do this. You know, it's like it's, it's whatever uh, the, the culture will accept. And, and, and at times, as a leader, you have to sometimes make a decision on if you're going to follow this path or are you going to let the majority just govern what you're going to do. And that's the difference. It's like as a leader, you have to make decisions. You know, the last time I preached on, on the Holy Spirit last year, I was preaching about the Holy Spirit and there was two young couples who just started walking away. You know when they walk away, like right when you're preaching, you know, mm, they don't have anything special going on. They're walking out because they don't like your servant. And they walked out and then they sent me an email. If you're going to speak about the Holy Spirit, we're not coming back to that church again. So here I am one year later speaking about the Holy Spirit again. So on the same exact day. Uh, so the thing is, I haven't learned my lesson. So that's what it is. Uh, it's just at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit is not a trend or a movement that you can put aside after a certain period of time and then bring back up again when you feel like, oh, this is a good time to bring him back. It feels like when I say Holy Spirit, the look on people's faces is like, it's like, ah, it's okay. They're fine with it. No, it's not, that's not how it works. The Holy Spirit doesn't change according to trend or he, he's not viral where it's just, ah, this, this week, because it's the week of the Pentecost, everybody's going to be fine with it. It just doesn't change that way. The Holy Spirit is a vital part of Christianity. Jesus makes it very clear that he's the vital part of the Trinity. Jesus says even when you baptize, baptize the people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it's very, very vital that you have the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in the Bible, when you read the Bible, the Bible says the same Holy Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead lives inside of us. So Jesus himself uh, needed the Holy Spirit to raise up from the dead. So we need the Holy Spirit very, very much in our life. So I want to talk about the Holy Spirit. The first thing is the Holy, the Holy Spirit empowers us. You know, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says this. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power and be my witnesses. 
See, the thing is, the Bible talks about receiving power. The Holy Spirit is the one who empowers us. You know, when you look in the Bible in Exodus chapter 2 and 3, there's a story of a man called Moses. You know, Moses was a great leader and uh, he was super excited. And at one point, he wanted to go out and do some leadership stuff. He wanted to go out and be like, hey, this is what it means to be a leader of Israel. I'm going to go out and, and kill somebody and become a leader or do something to be a leader. And, and, and all the people are going to look at me and they're going to be super excited and they're going to follow me. And so Moses goes out and he starts supporting people in his own strength. And, and then he even kills a guy on behalf of the people. And he's like, ah, this is going to get me some good, good uh, points here. And the people get upset at him like, hey, hey. Even though it was the wrong person, they, he killed their enemy, they were still upset at him. Doing things out of the will and out of the power of the Holy Spirit can, is never going to work out. It might seem for a moment like it's working out, but eventually it's going to be of no value. And that's what Moses realizes and he runs away for 40 years and he's just in hiding. When the Holy Spirit encounters him and he has this moment at the burning bush. And Moses' life is completely changed. And, he, and God sends him back to the same exact job. God's like, ah, I need you to go back and do this. I already tried it. It didn't work out. God's like, yeah, I just need you to go do it now with me. It's going to work out. No, no, no. And sometimes that's where we, we give up on God and things in our life because we try things in our own strength. And when it doesn't work, and when God's really definitely speaking to us, we're like, I don't think it's God really. I think it's just me wanting more beating now. You know, it's like, I just, I'm just a sucker for more abuse over here. You know, it's a sort of a thing. You know, it's like, I just want people to just say bad things to me. I just, no, it's, it's a, when God speaks to you and God wants you to do something, he's going to empower you and give you the strength to be able to go back and accomplish what he gives you. You know, Moses comes back and it's completely different. All the people start accepting him. In the first, they weren't. But eventually, God gives him the power and the Holy Spirit empowers Moses to be a leader. And that's the thing. The Holy Spirit is the one who empowers us. It's not that, you know, the, there's something different that, you know, just because you go to Bible college, all of a sudden you have this superpower to be able to stand in front of people and preach. I'm always wondering what to preach every time. Even last night I was like, ooh, this is going to be really bad. <laughs> you, know, you know, the weeks when we were doing the recording, it was way better because, you know, it was like if I did something wrong, I'd call Dave and be like, hey, Dave, cut that thing out. We're going to re-record this sermon again. <laughs> that doesn't feel right. And I have time up to Saturday night to change my mind and, and then repost a different sermon. Now I don't. And then even when, when I was preaching, sometimes I'd be like, cut that. I don't like the way it's going. Like right now, I can't do that. I can't be like, cut that. We'll start from the start again. <laughs> Guys, we're going to restart this thing again. It's not uh, The entry is not good over here. There's nothing I can do. It's just, it's, you know, whatever I say is going to come out. If somebody's offended, it's, hey, welcome to church. Okay? <laughs> online, you can sort of turn me off. But right now, it's a year like, ha, ah, Jesus. <laughs> this online service was so good. We were there for 10 minutes, and the worship was done, and we were done. <laughs> but now we have to watch this guy the whole time. And this is why. You know, the life of Moses was empowered because of the Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 22, you see Peter. Peter is a great guy. He's really excited to do anything for God. He sees Jesus in the water. He wants to walk in the water. He, he sees uh, like somebody kind of trying to put their hands on Jesus. He'll like cut their ears off. He's like a very bold guy. When Jesus is around, he'll like do a lot of things. Like uh, whatever it takes, Jesus, whatever it takes. And, and he's very, very bold. The day Jesus was getting like uh, beat up and stuff, he's like, oh, so you get beat up too. <laughs> and then, then he starts backtracking a little bit. And a little girl sees Peter and says, hey, aren't you the guy who was hanging out with him? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. Like, you're, you speak just like Jesus. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what you're saying. You look just like him. And all of a sudden, he starts to backtrack and panic because there's only so much you can do in your own strength and in your own ability. After some time, you start to backtrack and you're like, oh, I don't know about this. Uh, it's really not me. Because you, the one who gives you empowerment and boldness is really the Holy Spirit. It doesn't come from the inside. Peter wasn't this really bold dude. You put, him, put anybody in a, in a certain spot, everybody's afraid at some point or the other. You know, it's like, uh, I'll start freaking out when I see snakes. Like yesterday, I was, it was a teaching moment with my daughters. You know, they were panicking. Like the whole world was coming to an end because there was a little spider. Just a little spider on their toy. Oh, they were screaming like somebody was murdering them. Like, ah, ah. 
<laughs> and they were like right next to the spider too. They weren't like far away. They were like right next to it with like two tissue papers. Like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and they're having a whole conversation on who is going to like put the tissue paper on the, on the thing, on the spider there. Then I go in and I catch the spider. I was like, and then their mom was giving advice from the other room. I said, guys, you should take this to mom and put it on her bed over there <laughs> and see how she screams. <laughs> Give an advice from there. You know, everybody's afraid of something or the other, okay? When you're faced with that fear, it's going to show up. People are like, I'm never afraid of nothing. There's something we're all afraid. We just don't tell it what it is, okay? I just say it. It's the snakes. I just don't like snakes. I freak out when I see snakes. It's like, I'm like, ah. Uh, and I don't know what to do. And I start throwing stuff at it. Like it's, it's automatically, whatever I get, I start throwing. I throw my slippers at it. Whatever I get, I start throwing at it because I don't know what to do. I start panicking. <laughs> it's like, so if I see snakes, I, I don't like snakes. Okay? So that's the thing. Over here, Peter, he's a very scared guy. Uh, he was very bold looking when, when Jesus was around. But when Jesus was getting beat, even when it was a little girl, was like, hey, you're part of the team? Ah, no, I'm not part of that team. I don't even know these guys. But when Jesus was around, even though there was an army, he was ready to cut somebody's ears off and do, do all kinds of stuff. Because only so far you can go with Christ. Only so far you can go as a human. But after some time, you need the Holy Spirit in your life to empower you. Later on, you see in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, and, and Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. The same Peter who was afraid to talk in front of a girl when Jesus wasn't around. Now Jesus is in heaven and he's bold and people are uh, mocking him and people are saying all kinds of stuff and he stands up in front of thousands of people and he's preaching the gospel and 3,000 people are saved. How does that happen? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit empowers us. If you're afraid of Jesus in your life, it could be that you don't have the Holy Spirit in your life. If you're afraid about sharing about God to somebody, it could be that you don't have the Holy Spirit in your life to empower you because in your strength, you're going to be afraid to tell somebody about Jesus because that's, that's all of us. We just, it's just a little awkward, like just walk up to someone and tell them about Jesus. You just, that's what you want me to do. Okay, that's really weird. Uh, but, but you see people who walk up to people and they start talking to them about Jesus and they start praying for them. And you're like, wow, that's really cool how you do that. It, there's nothing cool in it. It's just the Holy Spirit empowers you. He gives you that ability to walk up to people and then the, the boldness comes in automatically. I feel afraid. Even as a pastor, I'm always afraid to go up to people and talk to them about Jesus. It's not like, oh, look at this. Let me go and talk to them. I'm always afraid. I, I try not to tell anybody nothing. Like, I, I, if I had it my way, I wouldn't say anything to anybody. I'd just be quiet. But, you know, the Holy Spirit inside is like, just tell, oh, okay. Okay, then. We're going to do this together. <laughs> and then you go over and you start talking to them. And then it just gets really awkward for them. Uh, because at that point, you know it's going to be awkward. But the Holy Spirit empowers you. I remember... Years ago, Chauncey would always uh, uh, ask me, Pastor, would you come and speak to my best friend? My best friend needs Jesus. And his best friend was at that time was in the gangs. And I'm like, Chauncey, your best friend know Jesus or anything like that? Chauncey was like, no, Pastor, he's my best friend. He needs Jesus. He needs Jesus. And, and I remember going down to, uh, with him to, to the neighborhood to see his best friend. And, and I remember just, just you know, saying a generic Christian statement that people say, God has a word for you. How many of you have done that where you walk up to someone and you're like, God has a word for you? 99% of the per time, people don't turn back and say, what is the word? Okay? But this guy did. <laughs> he was like, what is the word? I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> and, uh, it's going to go bad for you now, Jesus. <laughs> because I said, you do. <laughs> and I was like, right there. I was like panicking for a minute. And I was like, oh, Jesus, you need to speak really fast and really loud. <laughs> because it's not going to go good. But God started to speak. And I started to share about his life. And at that moment, he turns to Chauncey and he's like, did you say something about me to pastor? Uh, did you say my life to him? And, and it was at that moment he realized that God really cares about him. See, when he ta start to take steps, the boldness comes along with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who empowers you. Peter realizes that, you know, the world is not moved by love or actions that are human creation for too long. After some time, the world is going to get to a point and be like, hey, you guys are really not all that essential. You know, at some point, the world's like, yeah, we don't really need you. Why? Because if the church continues to function without the power of the Holy Spirit, there's only so far and so much of an impact that they can have. The true impact uh, on the world comes from the Holy Spirit. 
The true impact in somebody's life comes from the Holy Spirit because the church can only do so many good things. The church can only give away so many things. The church can only give away so many food or different things. And after some time, the people are like, yeah, that was great. Fine. What do you want me to do next? They say thank you and they walk away. But the more than that happens because of the Holy Spirit. And that's why the Holy Spirit is very, very important in our life. The early church was very powerful, not because they did all these cool things. Not because they had all the cool stuffs. They were very, very powerful because of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was what changed people's lives around them. And that's the most important thing. If you want to be powerful in your life, the Holy Spirit is the only one who can do that. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says, is a promise. John chapter 14 Verse 15 to 17, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit has been promised to us by God. Jesus promises us the Holy Spirit. He says over here, if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay? And then he says, and I pray that the whole, to the Father that he'll give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Here's the thing. Jesus says, I'm going to go back. I'm going to tell the Father to give you the Holy Spirit. He's going to be a helper. It's actually, uh, as you keep reading on, it says, Jesus says, it's actually good that I go back because the Holy Spirit's going to be here with you and He's going to live inside of you. It's actually a good thing to have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's a promise from God to us. And the Bible says the world will not understand this Holy Spirit. When you talk to the world about the Holy Spirit, people are like, well, what is that weird thing? You know, the Bible says the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees nor knows Him. But you know him, for he dwells with you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. See, Jesus goes back to heaven, and before he leaves, he tells his disciples, this Holy Spirit is a promise for you, so that he can be with you forever. Till I come back, he's going to be with you. See, if Jesus said, some people believe that the Holy Spirit is no longer for now, but Jesus said he's going to be with us forever till he comes back. If Jesus hasn't come back, then the Holy Spirit is supposed to be there. It's like, well, what happened? It's like, you know, these different uh, insurance deals and stuff and, and even like uh, uh, discounts. Like yesterday I went to the store to buy something. The one thing I bought was not, they were like, ah, that, that thing's not on the 50%. It says over there, everything is, that, that, not that one thing. I was like, what's with the everything then? This was on the same shelf as the everything. Yeah, but not this thing. I was like, this is on, it says, you know, like all pictures. Is this a picture? Yeah, but not this picture. <laughs> That's how it is. They say, yeah, the Holy Spirit is for now, but not now. Like, not now. Like was in the first century, but not now. What happened? The 21st century, it's just too much for him? Like too much technology? The Holy Spirit's like, ah, guys, way too much technology. Can't handle that. Just too much. I just need to leave. Like what happened? What happened in those last couple hundred years that the Holy Spirit decided, you know what, I know Jesus said, I have to be with you guys forever, but it's get, this ever is taking forever, okay? I'm just going to go back. I just need to go back home. So I'm just going back to heaven, okay? This is taking forever. Like Jesus said, he's going to come back like yesterday, but he hasn't. So he's taking too long. So I'm just going to leave. I'm going to go back home. And, and he just left. And, and then you're reading the Bible and like, hey, it says here, forever till Jesus comes back what happened and but people are there who want to say that the Holy Spirit is no longer available for today I'm like hey then I don't want to be Christian for today I just find something else then because if half the Bible is not relevant for today because people feel like oh times are changing so the Bible changes too like what happened then must be something changed Jesus might not be the only way could be there's another way too you know, that's the thing is the Bible is either true or not. And that's what the problem is. The world cannot accept the Holy Spirit because he guides people in the truth. He only speaks the truth and guides people in the truth. The Holy Spirit is a comforter and helper. John chapter 14 verse 26, the Bible says this. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, or in another uh, translation it says, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I said to you. You know, I would always use this verse when I go for exams. I'm like, the Holy Spirit will remind you of everything. And my dad will be like, yes, of everything you studied. <laughs> I'm like, dad, he's supposed to remind. Yeah, the Holy Spirit doesn't do cheating like that. He cannot bring to memory what you did not study. I'm like, ha, ah, come on. He, like, he can only get, remind you of everything I've said to you. So it's whatever you read in the Bible. It's you can't show up to somebody and be like, the Holy Spirit is going to remind me of this verse right now, which I never read. 
<laughs> it, there's nothing there. If it's not there, it's not going to show up. It, it has to be there for it to be downloaded, okay? So if you read your Bible, there'll be moments where a verse just shows up and you're like, that's pretty cool. I just remember that verse out of nowhere. Because you read it months or years ago, and all of a sudden the verse shows up at the right time, at the right moment, because the Holy Spirit will remind you. And he'll bring to memory. The Holy Spirit is an advocate. He's the one who speaks on your behalf. See, eventually, when you go to heaven, the Holy Spirit's going to be there, and He's going to speak on your behalf. He's very, very vital in your relationship with Jesus and you entering the kingdom of God. He's not just going to abandon you. That's why it's very important. Another part of the Holy Spirit, He's a comforter. He's somebody who comforts you. The biggest reason that you can see many Christians try to commit suicide. You know, I've attempted to commit suicide three times. One time I drank poison. And I was waiting to die, but I was just burping, like, you know, pesticide for a couple hours. I was like, oh, come on, this is not working. And then I tried it again. I tried again one more time, and then I cut myself many times because I just wanted to die. So I understand what it means to come to a place in your life of absolute hopelessness. See, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives you that comfort when you come to a place of absolute hopelessness. You know, you look at some Christians who are going through great, great difficulties in their life and you look at them and you're like, hey, how do you handle things like this? How do you walk through something so difficult in your life? Like I cannot imagine going through something so difficult. And he says, it's the Holy Spirit who comforts people in a way that we cannot comfort anybody. It's the Holy Spirit who does that. That's why it's very important that the church have the Holy Spirit more than any other time. Acts chapter 9 verse 31, the Bible says, During tough times, the church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, and were walking in the fear of the Lord in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, or the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. You know, when the church gets persecuted, the biggest moment of comfort comes from the Holy Spirit. He's the one who comforts us. He's the one who gives us this encouragement. The true encouragement and comfort really comes from the Holy Spirit. People can say whatever they want, but it'll only go so far. But when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, it'll guide you through seasons. It'll guide you through problems. It'll guide you through difficulties. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, I want to challenge you. Would you ask the Holy Spirit to touch your life? If you're asking this question, what do I do now? Just remember the Holy Spirit empowers you. The Holy Spirit speaks on your behalf. I remember a couple years ago when I was giving my resignation letter without any plan B. I don't know if you, have, you guys have plan B, plan A. I don't have plan B, plan A. Plan A is stay with Jesus. Plan B, become a gangster. That's my plan every time, okay? It's, if all else fails, I'd be a gangster. You know, that's why I'm like, Jesus, you know, I, I just, I, that's my plan. I always tell Jesus, plan A is with you. Plan B is, B is me, being a gangster. You know, I'm very good at that. <laughs> very, very good at it. Uh, I feel very comfortable in that area. <laughs> and so I always give Jesus two options. Jesus, if all else fails, I got this plan. I can still make it in America. <laughs> there are many gangsters wanted. You know, sort of a thing like that. But, you know, when I was going to my pastor a couple years ago, I felt like the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. Here's the plan. And, and, and this is what's going to change. So I go to my pastor and I'd given him a letter of resignation with no plan B, no nothing. It's just, you know, hey, Holy Spirit said, uh, I just have to make a change. I don't know what the change is. But I think one of the changes is, is taking a step of faith. And part of that taking a step of faith is just giving this letter to you and, 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 and then figuring out what it is. Because that's what faith is. Faith is not waiting till, till everything shows up and then you're like, ooh, I can do this now. And that's not faith is. Faith is taking steps of faith where, where nothing is yet seen. So I remember giving this letter to the pastor. And, and, and in that church, it was known notoriously that if you give a resignation letter or even sort of mention, hey, I would like to leave the church, they'd fire you immediately. Like, they don't even care. So they'd fire you immediately. So in spite of that, I still gave the letter. And I was like, that's fine. And I remember uh, that morning, on Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock, the pastor calls my office and says, hey, come to my office. I want to talk to you. I'm like, yeah, you read that letter. <laughs> and then I go into his office and I see my letter right in front of him. And he says, John, here's the thing. Just before, you, you, uh, before I read this letter, this morning at 5 o'clock when I was walking near my house, there was the guy who built our subdivision, who is not a Christian or anything to do with God, was walking around the subdivision after many years I'm seeing him in the subdivision. And I was talking to him and he said, hey, I feel like God sent me here this morning to talk to you about a letter or something you're going to receive today. 
that's going to throw you off, but, but God is in it. And so, you know, pray before you make any decisions. And he's like, I don't know what that means to you. Here is, he, here is a construction guy talking to a pastor of thousands of people church and, and many, many churches under him. And, and God can use anybody and speak on your behalf. And the Holy Spirit spoke on my behalf to the pastor. And so when I was sitting in front of his office, the pastor looks at me and he says, Hey, I really believe it's God's timing. God wants you to do something. Here's what I want you to do. Here's the process I want you to, to walk. And he, he walked with me through the whole process. See, the Holy Spirit will speak on your behalf even if you're walking through moments or places that you have no idea how it's going to go because that's what he does. He's an advocate. He's a very, very good lawyer. He's not the, the cheating kind. He'll really speak on the truth and speak on your behalf very, very much. You know, comfort and guide you in ministry and in life. There are moments in my life or in ministry where I get very frustrated. The one person who can give me the most comfort is the Holy Spirit. Even last week, when I was getting ready for our service, I was right here in our sanctuary just praying. You know, the one person who can give me comfort at any time, no matter what frustration, no matter what difficulty I go through, is the Holy Spirit. You know, if you're going through something in your life, I want to encourage you, would you just give the Holy Spirit an opportunity in your life? Because He can comfort you more than anybody else. If you've never asked the Holy Spirit to come into your life, I want to encourage you, to allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life. I'm going to share my story of how the Holy Spirit touched my life. I grew up in India in a pastor's house. You know, when you're a pastor's kid and uh, a pastor of a large church, every evangelist that comes into the city comes to your house. Every evangelist. So it's like every big, small evangelist, any music team, everybody would come to our house and they all like to fellowship with my dad. And what part of that plan is my dad would make every evangelist pray for us. <laughs> so that, that was the crazy part. So every evangelist who is known for praying for people to get filled in the Holy Spirit has been in my house and they all have prayed for me. So as a kid, from the time I'm a little kid, people have prayed for me to get filled in the Holy Spirit and I never got filled. Never. <laughs> so at one point, I was like, something's messed up here. All these people be making up stories. Something's not really true because all these guys are praying for me and nothing's happening. The many times that I genuinely asked that the Holy Spirit would fill me, I still didn't get filled, right? Till I was 17, 18 years old, I was sitting in a men's group, not the largest men's group. I think most men's groups are the same all over the world. It's very less. Uh, so it's just uh, three of us, the, pa the, the men's leader, and then there was me and this other guy next to me. And, and, and we were just singing a song. And it was at that time that I asked, I said, Holy Spirit, would you touch my life? And it was in that moment that the Holy Spirit touched my life in a powerful way. It wasn't this normal kind of way that a lot of people get filled. It was very, very powerful. It was like somebody was just pouring a lot of hot water on me. It was just a powerful moment and I started to speak in tongues. And it's ever since then, the Holy Spirit has been in my life. It wasn't somebody prayed for me, somebody made me kneel in the front or anything. It was none of that. Somebody didn't ask me to say A, B, C, D backwards or one, two, three fast, really fast. And somewhere in the middle, the Holy Spirit will jump on the train. Like while the train is moving, the Holy Spirit will jump in. And none of that. I was just by myself in the front, just worshiping God. I said, God, would you just touch me? Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit is a promise. If it's a promise... You don't have to say anything extra, anything less. The Holy Spirit will fill you. As our worship team comes back and sings this song. See, the song says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, this son, Jesus, is the one who promised the Holy Spirit into our life. As we worship the Lord in this song, I want you, if you have never been filled by the Holy Spirit, or if you have been at a place where, where people have prayed for you and you're like, ah, Tons of people have prayed for me. I've been at every Pentecostal service and, and nothing's ever happened. I've never been filled by the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage you. Would you just stand with us as we pray? If you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, nobody's going to come up to you and pray for you. Nobody's going to ask you to say a bunch of words, read a bunch of verses, nothing. If you want the Holy Spirit to touch your life, I want to challenge you just the same way that I was filled. 
Nobody prayed for me. Nobody asked me to say anything. The Holy Spirit is true and very, very relevant and evident. Without the Holy Spirit, there's only so far you can go. That's why you see great musicians and, and Christian leaders somewhere halfway. They're like, ah, I'm abandoning this. I can't do this anymore. You can be a great musician for a long time for Jesus. But after some time, it gets tiring. You can be a great pastor for Jesus. But after some time, it gets tiring. You can be a great believer for Jesus and follower of Jesus. But after some time, it gets tiring. And you're like, ah, I'm done with this lifestyle, man. I can't do it because you're doing it in your own strength. The only one who can take you all the way till heaven is the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage you today, if you've never had the Holy Spirit in your life, the Holy Spirit can empower you and change your life. Would you just pray as we sing this song? And Dave's going to come up and wrap up. But as we're singing the song, would you just pray out and just say, God... If you're out there, the Holy Spirit, would you fill my life? Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well and never runs dry. Drink from the water, come first no more. Come all you sinners, come find His mercy. Come to the table, He will satisfy. Taste of His goodness, find what you look.
I'm leaning down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God's so loved.